Dia not getting injured, everything seems to have stayed the same. Hmm. Listen, Nahida, we found out that Dia got out just fine today, even though she got injured every other time she fought the kidnappers. Do you think the samsara has been broken? Have we saved Dunyarzad? Really? Good job on all that progress. Get some good sleep tonight. Hey, what kind of an answer is that? Tomorrow will come. Everyone assumes this is common knowledge, but the only way you can know that for sure is if you experience tomorrow. How many todays has it been? Is it possible that today will be followed by yesterday? Does tomorrow truly exist as anything beyond a made-up concept? It's even possible that this entire world is a lie, and the history of the whole world has just been one endless sub zeros festival. Okay, okay, no more! Paimon's brain is already shut down. <laughs> That's why it makes no sense to waste your energy thinking about things you will learn tomorrow. Get some good rest. You know, use the bathroom and flush your anxiety dookie away. What did you just say? Did Paimon hear you correctly? Huh? People always say they feel a sense of relief after they take a duke duke. That's why I suggested you could try that. Is that so strange? Uh, it's so strange and so against common sense that... Paimon's at a loss for words! You were sounding kind of smart just a minute ago. I'm gonna sleep. Yeah. Even though it's happy and lively at the Sub-Zero's festival every day, it feels like it's been a long time since we've really gotten to relax. Uh, let's go back to our room. Continue the harvest. Compared to what we stand to achieve, these sacrifices are trivial. We're still in the same day! Hmm. Nahida, you already knew last night that we didn't break out of the samsara? Why didn't you tell us? <laughs> Would there have been a point? You that spent the night with new worries, with tomorrow still out of reach. In that case, you might as well rest within that brief moment of hope. An opportunity like that doesn't come by often, and I thought it might help you clear your minds. I'm a doctor! Looking out for us after all. <laughs> of course. In the time we've been together, you two have been everything to me. Uh, Paimon's flattered and everything, but maybe you're taking things a little fast. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, even though I had asked you to solve this puzzle, you two are still the only ones who can see me and sense my presence. In other words, if you weren't here, I may as well not exist. That's why you two have been everything to me. Get it? Nahida's talking about confusing stuff again. Anyway, that's enough chit-chat. So, Traveler, did the new clues yesterday help you gain a new understanding of the situation? We're not time looping. Huh? Why are you scrapping your previous theory? Uh, Deya. That. In a simple time loop, people's physical conditions should also reset. So, what's your new hypothesis? The moon, illusions, and lies. Mercenaries rely heavily on muscle memory, and Dia was able to use her experiences to avoid injury in later samsara cycles. The beep is a prompt tone for Akasha operations. We still hear it every night, even though we removed our Akasha terminals. Okay, Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace. Okay, Nahida said... We've already... If all our memories of a day are erased at the end of that day, then we would unwittingly relive the same day again and again. Hmm. 
said our memories are being erased every each day. Oh, then the beep we hear every night could just be indicating the deletion of our memories. That's why when we wake up, everyone thinks the Subzero's festival hasn't happened yet. It's already the next day, but everyone still thinks it's the day before. But muscle memory can't be erased. That's why Dia has been getting better at using her great sword. Now everything makes sense. Hmm, a brilliant deduction. Nahida, tell us if we're right or wrong. To put it simply, it's as if you've mistaken a pyro crystal fly for a firefly in the night. You lost sight of its true nature because you focus too much on your perception that it glows. That isn't simple at all! Huh. Why don't you go talk to Miss Dia again? You might learn something new. Right! She did help us find her latest clue after all. Let's go! Take it easy. There you are. Really took me a while to find you. As expected, Dia also didn't get hurt today. Get hurt? Why would I? Don't underestimate me. Well, you're still getting used to your new greatsword. Huh. Truth be told, I also think it's pretty strange. It just suddenly felt so familiar in my hands, and... Uh, wait a second! How did you know I got a new greatsword to begin with? I didn't tell anyone about it. Traveler, could you explain the situation to her today? Paimon's gotten a little sick of doing it. Fuck it. Oh, that works! <laughs> so I became proficient with your greatsword because... Oh, and... Uh... Your memories are being erased. What happened to you guys while I was gone? Did you get brainwashed by some cult? Nope. Um, don't think too hard about it. Just take what we're saying at face value. All right, then. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that my body's already gotten used to this great sword, but my brain just doesn't remember it? Yes, your memory's being erased every day. Then I'd have to disagree. That's impossible. Oh? Why do you think that? If we've actually been reliving the Subzerus festival day after day, then what happened to the things we used, the money we spent, the food we ate? Common sense says my wallet should have emptied itself a long time ago. There's no way I wouldn't have noticed that. I mean, I'm filthy fucking rich. They utilize the entire city's resources. Right! They could use the Akasha to record what everyone did that day, and then use the city's resources to replenish everything! It's not very likely, but it's also not impossible. No, it is impossible. I've got proof. You have proof? Where? <sighs> you two are surprisingly serious about this nonsensical discussion. Fine, I'll play along for a little longer. Come with me, Miss Dunyarzad. Please come along as well. I still can't guarantee that this area is safe. Paimon can't believe it's Dia who wants to show us something this time. Two days ago, we were the ones taking her to see Dunyarzad. This is it. Huh? This is a wooden training dummy. What about it? See those marks on the dummy? Those are the result of several days' worth of practice. Let's say the sages didn't replace it every day. Shouldn't it be hacked to pieces by now? That's true, but what if they did? Then the sages would have had to reproduce every mark I left during previous training sessions. I'm a professional fighter. My martial school has always emphasized the importance of refined control. The force, angle, and entry point of each strike is calculated and deliberate. That's why I remember every mark on the dummy. 
as well as my state of mind as I made each strike. It's just as they say, each swordsman has their own unique style, and even the same swordsman can't make the same cut twice. It would be impossible to copy these marks. Is it really impossible? <gasps> what if they use some fancy machine to carve every single mark? People often say that a camera's photo can never replace an artist's painting because the former has no spirit to it. The same thing applies here. At a mere glance, I can differentiate carved marks from the results of combat training. Hmm. Whew. I hope that cleared things up for you. Hey, is this that new brain exercise game that's been super popular with the scholars lately? It's surprisingly fun. Anyway, it's getting late. I should escort Miss Dunyarzad to Nilu's stage. See you later. Whoop! Back to square one. Is our memory deletion theory also wrong? <sighs> but at least we've reached some other conclusions in the meantime. And the real world. Yep, that's true. So, can we think of any new ideas right now? Well, it will. This game won't let me do my commissions. Strange? Paimon feels like everything's been strange lately. I never thought about leaving this. Oh, ho, ho. Clever. Huh? Leaving the city? You're right! It's really strange how we never thought of such a simple solution! Many things should become clear if we can confirm the flow of time outside of the city. Paimon can't believe it! Did we miss this because we're tunnel visioning too hard on our other theories? Or because we're just too tired? Okay, let's How go. about we go back and ask Nahida? Maybe we've forgotten something about leaving the city. Nahida, we're back! You're back early today. Did you find something new? Sort of. We're mostly sure now that we're not in a time loop. And we also aren't in the real world. But at the same time, we have a new question. Ever tried leaving the city? Hmm, leaving the city. As far as I remember, you've mentioned your plans to do that twice before. We did? But we don't remember anything. What happened after we talked about those plans? What did we say when we got back? <sighs> Let me think. I don't think you ever actually told me what the outcome was. Oh, it's probably more accurate to say that both times, you never came back the whole night. But you two sometimes stay out the entire night anyway, so at the time, I didn't think too much about it. It is true that sometimes we lose track of time during our investigations. Before we know it, it'll already be the next day. But still, neither of us remember anything about leaving town. Really? That's kind of strange. In theory, I should have already awakened all your memories. Do it. Yep. Something here's definitely fishy. Let's get to the bottom of this tomorrow. Say the city today. Uh, about that. Well, where should Paimon begin? Huh. Traveler, aside from your memories that were just restored, I have another message for you. From who? Listen to it and you'll understand. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Subzerus festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. Hmm. Traveler, you should be missing two days worth of memories. Paimon will fill you in. It's time to carry out our plan from yesterday. Okay, let's go. Oh, this is clever. Why can't we leave the city? What is the academia up to now? Don't ask me. It's not like I can tell you anything. 
This is a direct order from the Grand Sage. Just wait until tomorrow. I have a real emergency. My goods have already arrived at Port Ormos. If I don't hurry, they'll be stolen. That's your problem. Make sure you make a request in advance next time. But, but it's not like you can just predict business matters in advance. <laughs> It looks like the Academia already announced a lockdown for Sumeru City today. How completely unsurprising. Let's go and question them. Hello, sir. Why can't we leave the city today? Here we go again. Don't ask me. I don't know either. We just received an order that no one is allowed to enter or exit Sumeru today. They didn't tell us anything else. Of course, you're a pawn. <laughs> Angering me won't get you anywhere. If I had that kind of insider info, I would have left this stupid post long ago. It looks like he really doesn't know. If we can't get anything out of him, let's take matters into our own hands. Why don't we climb over the walls? Those guards can't be everywhere at once. This is a good spot, and the guard hasn't noticed us at all. Let's hurry! Stay here. Huh? Why? Are you going to leave Paimon behind? You need, we need a witness. But, but, what if things get really weird out there and you get into some trouble? Then, Paimon won't be able to help you. Oh, Paimon knows that Paimon can't do much, but we've always been together, haven't we? It'll be just the same as before. Mm, okay. Paimon will wait for you. Promise Paimon that you'll come back as soon as possible. Just a quick look. Okay, okay. And please, be careful. Uh, memories! Let's go and leave the city today. Huh? Paimon thought Paimon would never see you again! You, you just disappeared! Paimon waited for you for hours and hours at the city wall and you never came back! You promised Paimon that you were only taking a quick look! Huh? Paimon, calm down. He's here now. I don't think he understood what you were saying. wanted to go look for you, but you also said that Paimon should stay! Paimon was so worried and so scared the entire day! Sorry. I won't leave you behind. <gasps> okay. Paimon will forgive you. The most important thing is that you didn't actually disappear. Oh, Paimon was so scared that you had gone into another world! I don't think Trakun is here. Okay. Paimon, can you tell us your perspective of what really happened yesterday? Hmm, I see. Using two people's different perspectives. After that, you left the city. Paimon kept her eyes on you the whole time, but then you... disappeared in an instant. You want to zoom in out or anything? No way! Paimon was watching you with the fullest attention! What's your perspective, Traveler? You sure you don't have any memory of this? I don't even know that yesterday existed. I guess that explains everything. You also lost your memories the last two times you tried to leave the city. Those days' memories can't be awoken. So... If we leave the city, our memories will be completely erased? Oh, they just restrict access to Sumeru. It really sounds like something big outside of the city is being hidden on purpose. But this way, we'll also never discover what's outside! Be something behind other than memories. Something like... a message? But how can we send it back? D don't look at me like that. Uh, I'm, I'm not used to being stared at. Uh, well... Uh, okay, okay. You want something that can pass on messages, right? 
Give me some time and take care of Dunyarzad for me. Yep! Now we're talking! Changes. Akasha terminals are already capable of sending messages. I just tweaked it so that it could connect to any node. To make something like this? Nahida, you really know the Akasha like the back of your hand. Anyway, we can use this now to record a message, right? Yep. <laughs> I'll help you save the messages. It should be pretty easy to use. I just can't guarantee the user's status and signal coverage when they're outside the city. We'll never know until we try. At least we're taking the initiative now. Let's go. Let's go then. Let's expose those sages. I think you should stay. Uh, all right. Hyman isn't as worried about being separated since it happened once yesterday. But Hyman still isn't happy about it. See you tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow, traveler. That covers everything that's happened so far. <sighs> so, that message. Yes. Although the signal was choppy and had some interference, we still managed to receive two messages from you when you were outside. Okay, now that you understand what's going on, let's hear the messages together. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Subzerus festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. I've entered another space. Before me are flowing sandstone and howling fish. Impossible and surreal sights. All these spaces are empty except for the occasional ones that contain mute puppets rather than people. I can't sense any human presence. the heck of an info dump. It sounds like you left the Sumeru city space when you set foot outside of the walls. But everything looked completely normal when Paimon was looking out from the inside. That's unbelievable. And if we take your word for it, the other spaces all had very weird contents. There's another part here. We only received it last night. These spaces have been disappearing one after the other. Absorbed by something like a sun in the sky. And now, even the final space has also disappeared. Behind me, a lot of spaces just appeared again from thin air. I get it now! Those spaces are actually... Probably because yesterday just happened to end at that moment. Oh, right. Paimon did hear a beep from the Akasha. Did it come from here or from the message? The message. It should have come from the Traveler's Akasha Terminal. After the beep, Traveler said even the final space has also disappeared. <sighs> Traveler, what do you think that final space could have been? Was that space actually the real world? But wouldn't a real space just randomly disappearing like that be catastrophic? All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. A lack of human presence. My impression is that each day in this samsara only ends at the sound of that beep from the Akasha. That doesn't sound right. Subzeru's festival also disappears, and we're taken to the next day. Later on, Traveler also mentioned a bunch of new spaces materializing behind them. Do lots of new spaces appear every day? Paimon 
Dad's head is spinning. Just what are these spaces anyhow? Well, consider this. For all the horrors of the Archon War, at its heart, it was just a game where a bunch of gods fought over seven seats. So no matter how strange or spooky things may look on the surface, maybe all they point to in the end is a small and simple secret. Wow, the Archon War, huh? That's an analogy and a half. Hmm, secret. Give me some time, I need to organize my thoughts. Hey! Where are you going? The dance of Subzeros is about to begin. I'm going to go watch it. Hmm. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead, Dunyarzad? We still have some other stuff to do first. Okay, then. I'll see you later. Have you figured it out yet, Traveler? Time is ticking away. I think I know the answer now. Awesome! What is it? Paima wants to know! Oh, wait, no. Let's meet up with Nahida first. You can tell us both together. This time, we're gonna get to the truth. Take it easy. Take it easy. You're back. I've been waiting forever for you two. Judging by the looks on your faces, are you ready to take your Subzerius exam and graduate from the festival? That's great, Miss Nahida. <laughs> okay. First off, have you discovered the hidden truth? Okay. Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the god of... We've already ex... All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. A lack of human presence. And those spaces remind me of... Dreams. Like the one I had in the Avidia Forest. Except these have no sign of human presence. People in Sumeru don't dream. What a strange phenomenon. The moon, illusions, and lies. The moon... We are all in a dream. It isn't that the people of Sumeru don't dream. Rather, the Akasha is taking their dreams from them. People in Sumeru think they don't dream. But the truth is, the Akasha steals their dreams without them knowing it! And those spaces with no human presence are stolen dreams without their host. That would explain why they sounded so weird when he was trying to describe them. Huh. So people in Sumeru do dream after all. In fact, we're all in one big dream together right now! Correct answer. Now, how did you conclude that the Akasha is capable of this? The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate. It is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace. It compiles the wisdom and it grants knowledge to the people. That doesn't sound right. Oh, okay. 
Those dream-controlling creatures in the forest also get their power from the Dendro Archon, right? That would explain why the Akasha has the ability to control people's dreams, too. But is stealing everyone's dreams really how the Akasha compiles their wisdom? Isn't there anything more to it than that? Dreams are fantastical, complex, and full of imagination. People's brains are the most active when they're dreaming. In other words, dreams are rich bundles of human wisdom. So, in other words, the complete opposite of how Hypatia understood it. Parma remembers her saying that the sages think dreams are foolish delusions, and the fact that no one dreams is a blessing from Greater Lord Ruka Devada. Hmm. So it was all a dirty trick? The real story is that the sages from the Academia are using the Akasha to steal people's dreams for their own use, huh? And they don't tend to stop there. Bro. Oh? By the sounds of it, you understand the current situation pretty well. So then, what about the Samsara? Those spaces kept disappearing before my eyes. But as soon as that beep sounded, many more spaces materialized. Those dreamscapes kept vanishing, but as soon as that beep sounded, more new spaces appeared. The Grand Sage said, Hmm... I can Hmm... 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 hmm. Akasha is keeping each person's brain in a constant dream state, but also separating their consciousness from their own dream. Their disembodied consciousness is placed inside the collective dream of the Subzerus Festival along with everyone else's, while their now vacant dreams are harvested by the Akasha. No one is any the wiser as another day passes in the dream, and so begins another Samsara cycle. People wake up to yet another dream about the Subzerus Festival. The dreams that belong to them are once again harvested by the Akasha. And so it continues. So, this is like a dream factory. And the Akasha is a dream harvesting machine. Did Paimon get that analogy right? <laughs> Very good, Paimon. Using analogies well is an excellent habit to get into. Okay. So that beep we keep hearing is actually from our real-life Akasha terminals. Taking off our terminals in this dream doesn't do anything. All right, last question. Who am I? Now that I think about it, wasn't illusions a hint that we're all dreaming? They say that alchemical divination is the Dendro Archon's divine revelation. So then, if Nahida has referred to herself as the moon... Now that I think about it, wasn't illusions hinting at the sage's deception of Sumeru's people? <laughs> so you noticed. You are lesser Lord Kusanali. I thought that one would be the hardest question. That's why I put it last. <sighs> that wasn't hard at all. Even Paimon guessed that. Everything about you is different. We just didn't want to expose you is all. Now that you mention it, Nahida, you've been hinting to us since the very beginning. It's funny. Thinking back to when we were asking all over the place for info about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Paimon didn't expect to meet you like this. I have a lot of questions for you. Yes, those can wait until we're back in real life. On the other hand, I'd be happy to answer any more questions you have about here and now. Why couldn't you simply tell us the truth? You asked me this question before. My answer was, it would literally blow your minds. Now that you know this is all a dream, this answer should hopefully make more sense. Have you heard the saying, don't wake a sleepwalker? Likewise, if someone suddenly had told you all this instead of you learning it on your own, your notion of reality and dream would be thrown into irreversible confusion. I couldn't expose you to that kind of risk. That's why I could only give you very subtle hints and some suggestions. 
Long story short, I'm really sorry I had to keep you guessing. It matters to keep people from noticing. Firstly, this dream we're in is completely based on reality. People have already experienced this Subzerus festival, so it would be very difficult for them to find anything that strikes them as surreal. Secondly, you're probably wondering why people don't have any memories from earlier Samsara, right? That's because people don't remember their dreams most of the time anyway. And in any case, their actual dreams are being taken away from them by the Akasha. So whenever they wake up in this dream of the Subzerus Festival, they don't remember anything from their previous identical dream. That reminds Paimon. Traveler had a dream when we were in the Avidia Forest, but couldn't see what it was about after waking up. Is that an example of what you mean? Yes. Only after receiving the Blessing of Dendril can a person gain the Dendril Element's dream-enhancing power. That explains the feelings of deja vu. Meanwhile, everyone else has no idea that they are in the Subzerus Festival Samsara, while their dreams are stolen from them over and over again. How does this affect the mass-produced dream? Can humans really keep dreaming forever like this? Will it ever end? And if so, when? You might say your mental fatigue has already answered this question. Eventually, there's only so much that people can tolerate. Especially those whose health is compromised to begin with. Like Dunyarzad. This relentless exploitation takes an even harder toll on them. People's lives are at stake here, and nobody knows a thing! We've got to put a stop to this! I know, right? Why did they have to base this dream on my birthday? Could it really just be a coincidence? Even you don't know the reason? Wow. Now that's strange. The Academia Sages are determined to harvest lots of dreams in a short time, no matter the cost. They have to be up to no good. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about it. Traveler, do you have any information? And those spaces remind me of... dreams. Okay, Nahida said... the Grand Sage said... Celebrate the birth of that god? Could it mean...? Deceiving the people of Samaru with no regard for their safety. No matter what they're trying to do, this is unforgivable. After we end the Subzerus Festival, Samsara, we have to look into them. How can the sages of the Academia do this behind their Archon's back? This is ridiculous! In the end, I'm just the moon. The real sun is long gone. A sun and a moon? Ugh, Nahida's talking in riddles again! Oh, we're out of time today! I'll tell you how to break free of the Samsara tomorrow. See you then. Everything. Should we instead say good morning, Lesser Lord Kusanali? <sighs> hey, what's wrong, Nahida? You don't look too good. Could you have? I'm afraid that what you're thinking right now is correct. Did Dunyarzad already disappear? No way. Are are we too late? The real Dunyarzad's consciousness has indeed disappeared. It can no longer endure the constant dream harvesting. Paimon can't believe it! Wait, so what about that other Dunyarzad? Just what is she? Is she also going to disappear? She's actually something like a puppet, but not completely. 
the real Dunyarizad's consciousness could no longer keep playing her role in this dream. So another Dunyarizad appeared to replace her in the dream. Just like the grass and the trees, that Dunyarizad is just a building block of the dream that helps to keep it going. But personality-wise, she's nothing like the real Dunyarzad. Puppets are stiff and can't copy a living person's vitality. After all, they're just there as filler. And you know, speaking of which, the old Dunyarzad might not have been too different from a puppet. Dunyarzad truly believed that she met you within her consciousness. And it was you who inspired her! So you do remember her after all! Yes. Back then, her family was overly protective of her. No one cared about her personality or thoughts. It was as if she only lived to stall her Elazar. I just gave her a little wisdom so she could look at life in a new way. So that she could be her own person. But even so, she still... I still don't mean a lot up to her. Far from it. I'm still a long way off from being a real Archon. I couldn't even save her. If I were a competent Archon, I wouldn't have let my most faithful follower die at the Subzerus Festival with so many regrets. Please don't beat yourself up over it, Nahida. It's the Sage's fault, and theirs alone! I... I'm not beating myself up. All I did was to rationally observe the distance between myself and real Archon. Don't be like that, Nahida. Even real Archons are still allowed to be sad. To prevent more tragedies like this, we must end the Samsara as soon as possible. Great, but how do we do that? Although the Subzerus Festival dream is under the Akasha's control, only humans can dream. Even the Akasha is unable to create them. That means this dream belongs to a host who created it. Huh? So, how should we find that person? Well, if this is someone's dream, then everything here must come from deep within their consciousness. Which means, with the power of imagination, they can change anything in this dream. Imagination? What do you mean by that? Imagination means breaking through what you perceive as normal. Like when a server at a tavern brings a plate to you, you'd naturally assume that food is on it. However, if you're the dream's host, and you become aware that you're dreaming, when you imagine gold and more on the plate, the dream will respond in kind, and the server really will bring you gold and more. But right now, our host is unaware that this is a dream. No matter how many times they're served, it will always be food. So you find the host, then what? Find some way to make that person realize that they're dreaming. Usually, once that happens, the person will wake up and the dream samsara will be broken. How are we going to find them, though? If it could be anyone, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack! And even if we did find them, how are we supposed to make them realize they're dreaming? After all, like you said, don't wake a sleepwalker. It's extremely difficult, yes. But the only ones who can do it are you two. Remember, everything you've achieved up to this point has all been for the sake of finding the host and ending the samsara. As for me... Uh, during this time, I'll be out of town. Out of town? Are you going to that place full of dreams where the Traveler went? Yes. I want to try something. There must still be a small wisp of possibility. Naringo! Dreams are supposed to be fantastical, romantic, and full of pleasant surprises. Unnecessary things like this samsara need to end. <sighs> Paimon's still a little upset that we've come this far only for Dunyarzad to... 
She was such a good person, with such a simple wish. But fate was against her. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Saving Dunyarzad is what kept us going this whole time. But we mustn't lose hope, Traveler. Dunyarzad would definitely want to see us save everyone else. So let's break the Simsara for her sake. Paimon's wondering, do you think the sages would get one of their own to be the host of this dream? Feels like it would be easier to control it that way, no? No. They're no. Huh. That's true. Plus, the sages probably weren't counting on there being other factors beyond their control. Like Nahida and us. So, who do you think the host of the dream is? The strange get up. Oh, that would make sense. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is a symbol of the wholesome Zeru's festival, right? Pretty core character. Let's go ask him some questions, shall we? It's probably Nilu. 